we'd have, just have a little sit down off set while they were re rejigging something and Tony would just go aren't we lucky <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yes and we'd just have this lovely little oh my god we're so lucky and I'm so lucky to be sitting here with Tony My name is Brent Lang, and we're here at the Variety Virtual Studio at the Toronto International Film Festival. And I'm joined today uh, by the cast and the director and writer of The Father, um, Olivia Coleman, Anthony Hopkins, and Florian Zeller. Thank you all for, for joining us, and, and feel free to bring your pets uh, if, if you <laughs> um, I guess to begin with, Florian, was it difficult to adapt your own play, to direct your own play as a film? What were some of the challenges that you experienced? I would say the first challenge was to make it cinematic. You know, I didn't want to just film a play. And we kept the, the narrative of the play, which was to try to tell the story from the inside, you know, not, not to tell a story from the outside and to, to allow the audience to feel as if they were in Anthony's head. We worked a lot on, especially on on the set also to, to use what is uh, usable uh, on set to, to increase this feeling of disorientation. So, you know, when I wrote the script, I, I had the, a very specific drawings of the apartment and day after day during the shooting, the, the set changed, you know, it was small and slight changes so that it gives this strange impression for the audience to, you recognize the place, you know, the proportion, the way to, to, to travel in it, but still some things have changed, but you can tell exactly which thing, you know, so we played with the furniture, with the proportion, with the colors, so that you have the feeling to be at the same time in the same place and somewhere else. And I thought that it was very cinematic to create this feeling of disorientation again, to, to, to make people feel from the inside what it must be to, to start losing your bearings. I mean, it was amazing. I remember when it was Anthony, the character Anthony's apartment, and we're all going around going, oh, that's nice, love that, and oh, taking photographs of bits of furniture. And then within a couple of days, it was, we all felt, oh, it's, it's the same, but it's a slightly different color. And oh, there's different, oh, they've done that. The whole piece is so brilliantly, done like that, that um, you feel for the first time, and I don't know any other piece of work where you get to experience it from the point of view of the person that's suffering with dementia, but it, it, we did have a little taste of it, you know, sort of going, that was, I'm sure that was somewhere else, that, that was in a different room. It was brilliant. And, and uh, Olivia and Anthony, had you, had you seen the play before? I mean, how, how familiar were you with this? Uh, with I this haven't play? seen the play, no. 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 Was that a good thing in a way that you hadn't actually seen other actors perform it? I mean, do you prefer to, to go in sort of fresh uh, when you're creating your, your characters? I mean, some, some things you, you play, I suppose you can't help having seen, you know, endless Shakespeare has been done every week, but, um, and so you will have seen someone else play it. Um, I, I think I'm quite pleased that I hadn't seen this because um, I only had eyes for Tony and, you know, and it was, for me, it was fresh and ours. I did have an experience of, uh, several times of this disconnection in my head. And one day I had a real strange experience when I didn't know where I was. And I had to ask them there, I said, did I just say that? Did you just come into the room or? And that's happened two or three times. They called the doctor, he said, you shouldn't, you know, you, the day, brain's a very delicate balance. Don't push yourself. It's all very well being an actor, but don't push it too far because you can damage yourself, and so I took heed of that. So it, I just had a glimpse of what it must be like to lose sense of time, thinking in my yeah, did I just say that in my in the future? It was like a dream to to work with Anthony and Olivia, and so I learned that you always have to believe in your dream and to to, to give the energy to try to fulfill them because you know until someone comes and say says it is not possible, it means that potentially it is possible. It was a, a deep, profound desire. Uh, probably you noticed that the, the the character's name is Anthony because when I wrote the, the script, I I had Anthony's uh, Ho Anthony Hopkins in in mind, and 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 I was aware that it's not a very easy dream to fulfill because you know he's Anthony Hopkins. But uh, so I just sent the script to 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 his agent, and someone 
called me one day to, to let me know that he wanted to meet with me. And I took a plane with Christopher Hampton just to have breakfast with him. What is it like to sort of premiere this film at a virtual film festival? Uh, how are you kind of approaching this, this sort of unique circumstance? I think movies is all about desire and trying to, to make it happen. We are very grateful and lucky that it still exists, even on, oh, yeah. on virtual, you know. Of course, everybody would prefer to, to, to have a physical, uh, screening and also cinema it's a lot about sharing emotions and it's a lot about sharing experiences and sharing a moment in a room with other people so something this is missing us we are missing it <laughs> Sorry. Are. this is my pal Niblo saying good morning to everyone oh he got bored <laughs> Anthony, I follow you on Instagram. Have you been surprised by, what, what, what do you enjoy about the sort of social media experience? I got involved with it uh, a few years ago through Mark Wahlberg, of all, which I didn't know what Twitter was, I didn't know anything. What I do now is send a message out to people who want to watch. Let's not take yourselves too damn seriously. Let's all wake up and have a bit of fun, because everyone's so grim. <laughs> so anger. Oh, you're wrong and I'm right. It's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we don't know. That's the wonderful freedom. We don't have a clue. We really don't. <laughs> and it's wonderful. And you know, everyone's up there going boo, 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 and shouting and screaming on television. And we know, and you think, come on, we're all going to be dead one day. <laughs> and that's a big joke. Has uh, Niblo, is, Niblo is, is the cat's oh, name. Oh, Niblo, it's got, he doesn't care a damn. He <laughs> eats and sleeps. <laughs> That's what's wonderful about animals. And you know, with his dogs and your dogs. Is that they have no agenda. They yeah. don't care. They have no agenda. And we think they're stupid, but they're not. You know, you look at the extraordinary intelligence of any animal or plant. Everything is the truth. You look at my cat, Niblo. There in his body is the mechanism of stardust or divine creation. It is. But we think we're so damn special. We're not. And I think that's what I loved about doing this film with Florian and Olivia, is that we're not. And it's a great thing because the burden of carrying around saying, I know, I'm certain. That's a nightmare world to live in. Mm -hmm. Look around the world at us today. Look at 80 years ago, there was a man who was certain about the destiny of his nation. Mm. Millions of people were destroyed by it. So it's great to let one say, okay, I don't know. I don't have a clue.